seconds, 30. Uh, I, usually there's not too big of a delay. Just uh, double checking here in the studio that it's up and running now. Joe, you're no longer in Ibiza. All right, we are we are live again. Hi, <laughs> right, everyone. I don't know what happened. We use a Melon as our OBS, and we hadn't had too many issues with them yet, but um, the video did knock out. So uh, hopefully sorry people... About yeah, sorry about that. Let's see. That's, what, that's what happens when you go live, though. This that's what happens when you go yeah. live, yeah. Okay, no scripts, no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope people join again because you know, like that was a we went down for a bit there. Um, we were down for a couple minutes. Um, damn, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It happens to the best of us. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we were just talking. Still, I mean, we didn't end the conversation, so <laughs> we, we were still talking about RBI. And uh, me and Chelsea came up with a great idea. Why not just demo something real quick? How we can pull data in, uh, extract it, query it and then how we can then transform it to be used for visualization and then load it into our Power Query. So um, I know that all sounds technical, but uh, it's really amazing. And Chelsea, did you want to do it or me? Or? So I, I do have data loaded, Joe. You want me to hop in and do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at it. Let's check okay, out cool. something. OK, Let's cool. See. I'll hide my screen. Oh, all there right. goes my head. Everyone can see all my imperfections. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I have paint chips in my hair for cleaning my house. My I'm glad I got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, cool. And I, hi, Samir. I saw your chat. Thanks for jumping back in. Um, here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Craziness for a hot second. And then we Ooh, should be. Great up. question from Samir. What is a DAX expression? Oh, that is a good one. Can you guys see my Power BI? Yep. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Sweet. So that is a really good question, Samir, and I'm going to start with that. Um, so a DAX expression is uh, is essentially, it's like an Excel function, except it works on entire fields of data at the same time. So let me see if I can pull up a, um, a relevant set of data here. We can use this as an example. Um, so let's say for instance i want to be able to just do a basic calculation like maybe i just want to um, have a field in here that um, actually shows the total sales based on a particular calculation i i do have total sales here but it doesn't have the um, actual calculation that i really want and so i want to build my own um super easy to do we just add a new column and then um after we've added this new column however long it's going to take my power bi to think about that um so now we could just go into this formula bar and go ahead and, and add in whatever calculation we want this is pretty basic these are just formulas right a formula is just some sort of mathematically based um uh, uh formula <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, and that's pretty easy. And that's not really what Samir is asking here. Samir is asking, uh, what is DAX? What is uh, DAX? Um, and DAX is the Power BI version of functions. So in Excel, you know how to do basic formulas like plus, minus, multiplication. Uh, but there is these this whole um, language of functions like the sum function, like the VLOOKUP function, like index math like uh, some if, like um, trim and len, all of those other functions that exist in Excel, that, that's a whole functional language. Well, Power BI has its own functional language. And what's nice is that you can actually use the functions that you're already familiar with in Excel, which is one of the reasons why Power BI is so powerful, because it allows people who are already familiar with Excel to like uh, recycle their knowledge about these function names. Now, it doesn't work for... Um, not all of the functions will be called the exact same thing because not all the functions in in Power BI are the same as their Excel equivalents. And there's one really important reason for this. Um, Excel operates on a cell to cell relation. Power BI operates on a field, field, whole field to whole field relation. Okay, so for that reason, um, the the functions in Power BI need to be built very differently. Mm -hmm. um, 
So that's why a whole language was created in Power BI, and it's called DAX, Data Analysis Expressions. Um, and so that's why we call them DAX expressions. Um, and, and you'll see that there are some, like we were talking about, there are some that, uh, that are direct equivalents to the Excel uh, parents, I guess. Um, but there's also, you'll find that uh, here's another really common one, right? If we go to type in VLOOKUP, it's going to be like, um, what? Like, I, we don't have a VLOOKUP. And that's because um, they had to create a whole different type of uh, functional language in here. And they ended up really, um, you know, renaming some of these things to be more appropriate for this, for this system. So the um, VLOOKUP equivalent is called related. And instead of doing like a cell to cell comparison, it does a field or column to column comparison, field to field, call to call, column to column comparison. So that's what DAX is. Great question. Thank you so much, Samir. That was a good one. Do we have any other questions? Okay. For those of us who are a little bit more fluent with Power BI already, I would love to know what your most commonly used function is right now. What's the function that you use in Power BI? Or I should say, what's the DAX expression that you use in Power BI? And with that, Joe, what have I forgotten here? What, what can we demonstrate? So, um, I mean, related, that's actually funny that you chose that one because that's one of the ones that I use all the time. So, uh, you know, as Chelsea was saying, there is no VLOOKUP. And the reason being is because in your Power BI, you're able to create these relationships between, you know, multiple data sets. And when you create those relationships and you'll see Chelsea's moving over to that relationship model, you'll be able to then relate the data based off of a singular column or a singular data set that matches. And it could either be a one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationship. And once you have those relationships, you can then pull the data into one. So it's kind of like consolidating the data or merging the data. And that's why I use related a lot because I might have data, like maybe I have my employee's social security number in one data set but then I have their favorite color in another. And instead of always looking at both of those, what I wanna do is just have one data set that has their name, their social, and their favorite color. Why not, you know? Why not just have all of it in one place? So I'll create that relationship. I'll do exactly what Chelsea just added there. I'll create a related DAX expression, and then I'll relate that data, and I'll be able to consolidate it or merge it all into one. And then once I have all my data in one place, I'll create these wonderful dashboards. Um, and, and really, like I said, it, and, and Chelsea's right, they're so similar to functions that you'll start to use these and feel like, wow, like I know this stuff. It's not, it's not so difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, just, just, and everything kind of speaks in a language that you'll understand. Um, so yeah, I just, I think that's one of my favorites is the related DAX expression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, if you have one more question from Samir again, real quick, um, I guess it's one that maybe both of you could answer. Um, can Power BI and Power, I mean, Power Query and Power BI replace VBA? So if I may hop in here really quick, um, in a lot of ways, yeah, it can. And, and, and if you can do something with Power BI or if you can do something with um, Power Query or Power Pivot in Excel, you should do it there instead of VBA. Um, VBA is great for really custom operations, but uh, outside of that, it, it, this system is so efficient. Um, the querying engine in here, it, it can um, repeat all of those steps. And I've had uh, several tasks where uh, that I've programmed for people uh, and actually had the opportunity to compare the VBA equivalent to the Powered Query equivalent. And it is like, it is exponentially more efficient. So if you can do it in in Power Query or um, Power Pivot, absolutely do it there instead of in VBA. So a really good question, Smear. Um, so with so with that, um, keep keep on coming with the questions. Let's get some more questions. Is there any questions that you have? I'm gonna just um, finish up our topic with Joe here. Do we have a couple extra minutes, Ben? I do, um, Joe. I know you have kind of a hard stop today, but um, yeah. you need to drop Joe. Just uh, drop out, and uh, me and uh, Chelsea can <laughs> take it. Take yeah, it home. Yeah. 
course. And also remember when I am dropping out, it's because I'm going to be doing a two day course. So if you just joined up, um, you know, and you're just watching this now, we are offering as a bonus today, the two day course of Power BI, which I'll be training that uh, starting in a couple of minutes. Uh, it starts at nine officially, but I will hop on there a little earlier and then it goes into tomorrow as well. So yeah, definitely feel free to, and Ben has more detail on how you can get access to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's gonna be a bonus giveaway. So uh, mm -hmm. thanks everyone. Thanks Chelsea. And I'll see you all, see you all soon next week. Thanks so much, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. Bye Joe. All right. Bye Joe. And we definitely don't want to overlap Joe's course. And we're not going to do that right now for anybody who is going over to George, Joe's course right now. Um, Actually, I was thinking maybe we could just like toss up a little teaser here that kind of shows people what you can do in Power BI with super quickly with very, um, very little startup time. Um, and then we can go over to Joe's course or um, for anybody who who wins that giveaway or purchases a course through um, Learn It, uh, you can certainly get all, all the information there. So, so we were talking about creating a function and that's all, uh, creating a DAX expression in here and that's all well and good. And Joe can uh, give you a lot more information on how to do that. One of the things I wanted to show people is how easy it is to, um, to throw together reports. So if you're familiar with pivot tables at all, even just a tiny bit, you, you'll be able to um, create some some reports here really easily. So let's just throw something together. So I've moved to my report area of Power BI up here in the upper left-hand side. And I don't have anything on my on my canvas yet, on my page. Um, but you'll see on the right-hand side, I have all of those fields. It kind of looks like the the um, uh, pivot table view, right? So we have a list of all of our, our fields over here and we can just grab the fields that we want to consider. And unlike the pivot table, um, actually a pivot table does this as well. It does allow you to check the boxes. So I'm just going to go with that. We're going to use that scale. So I'm going to click on, on total sales here and it just starts throwing together uh, a visual for me. That's good. And then I just decide how I want to slice this up. So am I trying to look at total sales by like store or by, um, category or anything like that? Um, I can just go into the, into the related table. That's why it's important to create relationships. And again, Joe, could, Joe Bootcamp will fill you in on all of that stuff. Uh, we've already done that here. So it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to step into, let's say I want to look at my major product categories. So I'll just step into my product category table here and find the, um, the field for a product category name, check the box. And just like that, you guys, it was two clicks. It was two clicks. And I have this gorgeous looking visual, right? And my, my C-suite, which I don't know, I don't know if you guys have the same experience, but usually when I'm in a meeting with the C-suite, they're like, oh, neat. Oh, cool. Can we also see blank, right? And previously you were like, well, no, because I didn't build that into my report yet, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in Power BI, obviously it's super easy. So if they were like, I want to see total sales by channel instead, you're like, great, click, click, click. <laughs> There's your channels. Bam. Yep. Just like that. And what's so great, the the even more powerful thing about this, and then this is my last uh, last item on my soapbox rant here, <laughs> um, <laughs> is that all of this data here is actually connected live in real time to the data source. So if you are querying data from a SQL server, or if you're querying data from an online live data set like Salesforce or like um, uh, th there's tons of different options there. Just because you hooked it in in the first place, you don't even have to really click anything right now. Um, uh, just because you hooked it in in the first place, you're sure to have the newest information right here, right now. And if you want to refresh, you can always refresh this data at any moment um, to pull in the newest data. So that's what makes it so powerful, right? Not only can you build these visuals, gorgeous visuals, uh, and again, you have all the same cool stuff that you have in Excel, plus more. You have your slicers. You have all kinds of neat looking pivot charts. Um, you have all of those here, plus uh, just a, a plethora of additional options. Um, and of course, it's hooked into the live data. It's awesome. I think you uh, answered Samir's question a little bit about, you know, suppose I have a large data, then how can I understand what the data, what data is required for report? Oh, good question. So Samir, this is, um, there's a nuanced 
answer to this. So we did sort of do like an overarching answer, but there is a more nuanced answer that I, that I would love to step into. So, um, that's a really good question. And when people get really experienced with doing Power BI and when um, people are asking you to do Power BI stuff more often, you do run into that issue of like, what do I put in the model? What do I make available in report view? Like, what do I bring in? What do I leave out? Um, so in terms of performance, you definitely always want to leave out whatever you can leave out, whatever you're not going to use uh, um, for either relating your tables for the actual reports or for, um, you can set some row level security, which again, Joe's bootcamp will go through. Um, uh, anything that you're not specifically using for one of those purposes should be left out. That will help the performance within your data set. Um, for in terms of what to put on a report, it's a really good question, Samir. And conceptually, I think about it like this. You have two different types of data that you can use in reports. You can use numeric or calculable data, right? Data that you can aggregate and analyze. Like for instance, my total sales here, that's information that I can aggregate and, and analyze. It tells me uh, information about how my business is running. Uh, so we have numerical calculable data. Uh, and then you also have categorical data. Categorical data is labels usually, like here we, we're talking about the channels here, store, online, reseller, catalog, that this is all contained within a field called channel. And you can think of uh, the channel names as being categorical data. It's usually words. Um, and, and usually that word will appear a ton of times in the original data set. Um, and so, so those are the two types of data that you want to consider, um, at least as you're getting started. Of course, there's Lots of shades of gray to be had here, but that those two concepts, numerical data and calculable data. If you grab at least one piece of numerical data and at least one piece of calculable, um, <laughs> sorry, that was confusing. <laughs> if you grab at least one piece of calculable data, like numerical, and then you also grab a categorical data, you just uh, throw one of each into a chart and you'll have something analyzed. Great. Well, Chelsea, I've taken a ton of your time today already. Uh, <laughs> this was do, super fun, Ben. Yeah. And I know we had some tech complications. So so thanks, everybody. for. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for dealing with our little tech comp. I'll be uh, writing a message for sure to uh, Melon about their OBS. <laughs> like, hey, like, why did it cut out? But um, I do want to announce we do have a winner. Um, Elsie, if you're watching, you did win. I sent you the uh, instructions. Um, you're all set for the class. I sent you the uh, link to join the class. So you're all set for that. Uh, if you're here on the chat, you know, we'd love to hear from you, but you know, maybe you're jumping into class. <laughs> um, and again, thank you everyone for watching. Um, next week we are having a, um, we're going to be covering uh, a the API uh, court case between Oracle and Google. We'll have a Nia from, uh, Man, I'm forgetting her her channel, but she'll be here to talk about uh, coding and APIs and you know the the after effects of that landmark uh, Supreme Court case, which you know is affecting you know answer, was trying to answer the question: Can you copyright an API? So we'll have that discussion uh, next week. I'm really looking forward to that. Also, remember to like and subscribe on Chelsea's channel. I'll get her link in the description here. It was in the original one. So please go to her channel, uh, <laughs> like and subscribe there. Um, and again, it, all that helps a lot. And you like and subscribe our channel as well. It all helps tremendously uh, for all of us here. And, and it, may, it really makes it possible for us to keep bringing this content to you. So um, yeah, and that is it for today. And I, oh, Elsie, <laughs> there you are. Congrats, Elsie. Um, yeah, our big winner. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hope you enjoy the class with Joe. <laughs> All right. And uh, right. goodbye, everyone. Have a great, great week. Thanks, everyone.